Hello and welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today we have a super fun episode where I'm taking you to Lamb Town 2023. But if you're new here, I live in Northern California with my husband and dog Benny. I love everything yarn related and I hope you stay for my yarn journey. So this past weekend, I was able to visit the 7th Annual Lambton Festival located in Dixon, California. It was such a great event and much larger turnout compared to last year. Given that last year was its first year opening since COVID, there was a line trying to get in and this year they had over 60 vendors. Something different from last year was there were two indoor marketplaces as well as one outdoor marketplace and I just love the variety of vendors that were available. This year I plan to buy wool which I'll show you after the video clips what I purchased but they had everything from meetups they had BIPOC meetups LGBTQIA meetups stitch marker meetups they had workshops they were hosting the first two days of the event I didn't take any workshops this year but it was really cool to check out what some of the offerings were they were also open Saturday and Sunday they had a textile competition that I entered but it was overall a great time and I wish it was happening way more often than once a year so next up, I'll be taking you shopping with me. Let's explore the vendor halls together. Look at the cute chic babies. And then afterwards, I'll show you what I got, some fun fiber, as well as what happened at the textile competition. So stay tuned. So I hope you enjoyed the cute footage that I took this past weekend. Now we're gonna talk about what I purchased at the Lambtown Festival this year. So after I walked around, took everything in, my first stop was Pants Gardens Yarns. This is a fiber artist themed Brenda located in Boulder Creek, California. She has an Etsy shop where you can check out what she's selling and there was a gorgeous pink bat that needed to come home with me. So this is how the bat looks. This is the cute little logo, it is a lion unicorn looking sheep 
colorful thing and it says wild and wonderful hand spun yarn and other fine fiber creations and so the content that's in here is merino wool miscellaneous wool angelina and stelina there's 3.4 ounces in here and i got this for 18 dollars 75 but look how gorgeous that is i don't want to take it out yet because i do plan on spinning with it and i don't want it to get crazy but i just really love the sparkle the glimmer the glam and it was calling my name and needed me to take it home so let me know what you think about it i've never spun from a bat before so this is going to be a new experience because there's only 3.4 ounces it's going to highly depend on how much yarn i'm able to yield from this but i'm thinking maybe a cute hat and glove mitten set similar to what i did last year with my previous roving so next up, I stopped by the Wonderland Dye Works booth, owner Elisa Vett from San Francisco. And this might sound familiar because last year I purchased my first braid from her where I made my hat and fingerless mitten set. And so I was wondering the booth, there were so many options, but for some reason this dark blue called to me and let me show you why. So this is the bag that I purchased at Wonderland Dye Works. I purchased three braids of wool and each one is five ounces. So there's 15 ounces pretty much really close one ounce less close to a pound of wool and my plan is to spin another sweater with this so these are just so beautiful i was in line trying to decide if i was going to buy two braids or three braids and originally i just had two braids in my hand and then the last one i decided to pick up because i always short buy I buy less quantity than for what I actually need, trying to be cost effective and frugal, only for it to bite me in the behind because when I'm working on my project, I'm running out, it's really difficult to reorder braids. One, because the dye lot probably isn't gonna match, and two, since this is a small batch dyer, most likely she's not gonna have any of this in stock for a really long time. So I remember buying wool braids at Stitches West. I only bought two braids. When I tried to get a third braid, she didn't have any more in stock so she would have to re-dye it and it just wasn't worth the hassle for that so i decided to eat my pride and purchase all three and good thing i did because these were the last three braids and then a customer came up to me saying you took the last three blue so i said i'm sorry but actually i'm not sorry because you snooze you lose and now they're mine but i thought that was funny a funny like yarn competition rivalry like i need those skeins i need those rovings and it just kind of reminds me of the craziness that rhinebeck brings as well like the people just get really i don't know demanding or i'm not sure they get a little crazy over there but this is how the braids look so i have one two and three this is the cute this is the cute logo for Wonderland Dye Works. She's going to open the shop up again. She has a website called wonderlanddyeworks.com. Right now, everything is sold out, but after she re does her inventory again, everything's going to be back online. But this one is called Mystic Blue. It's 80% merino wool, 20% tussle silk, and hand dyed in Northern California. So this is probably going to be the first project I work on to start spending. One, because it's gonna take a long time, and two, because the color is just so stunning. And something gravitated me towards this. And I remember going to a yarn shop last year and I tried on the Wave of Change jacket and I really wanna try to spin for that jacket. So let me know what you think. I know blue is not really one of the colors I gravitate to. I'm more of a pink and purple type of girl. But this one, I love the color. It's a really dark, great neutral that I'm excited to have in my wardrobe. I would say within the next six months to a year because it does take a long time to spin and then create a sweater from what I spin. So one thing that's cool about Lambtown is there is a skein to textile competition where you can enter anything that's knitted, crocheted, woven, or even a skein, a hand spun skein, to be evaluated and judged by judges. And then at the end, you can get a first, second, third prize, little ribbon, a little gratitude a little accomplishment a little bragging rights for the item that you created so this year for the very first time i entered my year-round popover by melissa georges and so this is the sweater that i entered for the competition and i entered it because 
one it's hand spun by me two is my first ever hand spun sweater so of course i could have entered anything that i've knit or crocheted in the past but i wanted to challenge my hand spun skills and enter it this time the color granted is not the best color because sometimes it gives off green or yellow brownish mixes and so i didn't really like that it was coming out green even though when i wear it it does look brown but that doesn't matter i entered it here is my little ticket part of the competition was you also had to include a little swatch or skein so this is how much i have left over from this project so i probably have no intention of ever using this but for now it will just kind of go together and so both of these were clipped together on display they also had people's choice so even if i didn't win a category if it was favorited by the people i could have also won that so when i went to go pick up my items they gave me this little paper and sadly i did not win i'm a little salty about it but I included a little description of my sweater. So I put this as my very first hand spun sweater. The wool is 100% carded merino wool space dyed from paradisefibers.com. And for the most part, I had nine wraps per inch. One little thing that I forgot to mention in here was half of the sweater is three ply. The other half is two ply because when I was spinning, I thought I was going to have enough and I ran out. Anywho, I didn't win. And the judge's comment said it was a little bit rough for Merino. And I'm not sure what they mean by that because the description of the yarn literally says 100% Merino on the website. It says some bias in the fabric from inconsistent yarn. Okay, fine. That's where the three ply, two ply comes from. And they're thick and thin, so fine. They can get that. And then it says keep practicing and swatch. Good start. As a swatch. But... It gives me motivation to keep practicing and I haven't really been committed to my spinning journey. It's kind of on and off. Sometimes I'm into it, sometimes I'm not. And so that's why I wanted to continue to practice, put in a certain amount of time per week just so that I don't fall out of the habit and could continue to improve on my skills. And maybe next year I will try again and actually win something because I really want one of those cute ribbons that people can... I'm forgetting the word i don't know just have bragging rights that what i made was cute but overall i had such a great time at Lambtown festival i wish there were more festivals near me to go to i know that rhinebeck is coming up soon and i wish i could go to that one too even though sometimes festivals can be really overwhelming one because you're pretty much buying lots of things it's really hard to resist buying all the things and the credit card charge is going way up so i think that i was frugal in my spending reserved in my spending but of course it was so hard to not buy every little thing that i saw i really love the little food trucks that they had i love the little sheep and being able to like scratch their little heads so this is a festival that i do highly recommend that if i'm still in california would like to go to next year as well so next up we're going to talk about what i'm wearing as well as how my works in progress are actually doing so right now I'm wearing the ranunculus. This is wool that I got from Spain. It is very rustic but not uncomfortable, not itchy and I love it. But this isn't the first yarn that I ever blocked that didn't grow. So that's why my sleeves became three quarter sleeves even though they were supposed to be up to my wrist but it's so cute i need to wear this as it gets chilly outside next up i have my two by two hat and i started the decreases for my hat because I changed my mind and I didn't want a rim anymore. So this is how the hat is looking. I should have been done, but I stopped midway because it's really large and I'm thinking it's not a hat is not doing the yarn justice. And because I have so much more yardage that I anticipated, I'm thinking of maybe making a, a vest, a wool vest with it because I don't have to do sleeves i have a, enough yardage for the body so i'm thinking of ripping this out and trying again i'm gonna try it on for you but if my hair looks crazy afterwards <laughs> don't look at it so this is how the hat is looking right now and i'm almost done with the decreases so if i was to stop here it would fit and it would be okay but i don't know if it's the yarn or if i wanted something more fitted but it looks like i have a big head and so i was thinking if it had less stitches like something that was more fitted it would 
it wouldn't make my head look so big but i feel like i have like a mushroom head and i really want the yarn to shine and grow and be beautiful and right now this pattern is just not working with the yarn so i'm thinking of ripping out and experimenting a little bit more just because they're not meshing well together so let me know what you think about my mushroom head but for right now there's a pause on this project. This hat is the 2x2 two two hat by Anne Gagnon, my favorite go-to pattern, but right now, <laughs> they're not seeing eye to eye. Next up, I have my marled top-down turtleneck. This is the yarn from Michael's, a big box yarn store by a Karen Cakes. And this work in progress also had to go on timeout because the sleeve instructions were killing me. It wasn't making any sense. I had to do the sleeve, rip it out, do the sleeve, rip it out. I want to say three or four times. So I finally gave up. I made my own instructions. I will include that on my Ravelry project page in case you want to do it. But the decreases don't align with the amount of stitches because it just says decrease rapidly and then you get this weird cut. It, it doesn't it's not seamless so I wanted to smooth the transition in the decreases so it actually looks similar to this so I knit for two inches for the sleeve and then I decreased one stitch knit seven rows decreased another stitch knit four decrease knit four decrease knit four and I continued in that pattern so I still am not at the amount of decreases that I'm supposed to have but when I try it on it still looks cute so let me stop talking and show you where I'm at. I really hoped that, that I would be finished by today, but time was not on my side. So the reason why this took me a long time to kind of complete was because it had to sit in time out. I was getting so annoyed and frustrated with the sleeve. So the turtleneck is complete. The body is complete. And this part has been done for maybe two weeks ago but it's the sleeves that have been killing me. So this one I just started working on last night and then finally this sleeve is complete. So you can see the decreases, there is a smooth transition of decreases, it's not so abrupt. And I was trying to see the other pattern pages, the project pages to see if anyone had that same issue and it doesn't seem anyone does. So I left the seven circulars on the sleeve just in case I need to add some length because I want to work on this sleeve, try it on, and then see if I'm going to cast off. So let me try it on for you. I'm loving it. It's so cute. It is a little bit oversized. I decided to knit size 2. I want to say it's the medium size. But it is a free pattern on Ravelry. If you go by the Karen Cakes, it's also on the yarn label. And right now, with all of this knit, this is two balls of the big cakes. I still have one ball unused that i'm hoping i don't have to touch so i can do a giveaway but let me try it on for you so you can see how it's fitting so this is how the sweater is looking i'm loving the turtleneck part i didn't want it too high up so i can have some breathing room but this is the turtleneck i really like the turtleneck construction i had to work on the turtleneck before the sleeves because i felt like i was doing something wrong but this is one of those patterns where you have to trust the process and listen to the instructions other than the sleeves because i was like how is this big gap gonna fit a turtleneck but it does believe it or not it does so it is a little bit oversized but i'm thinking that's okay so i can wear something underneath and then also because it doesn't get freezing cold where i'm at it can kind of be a outdoor piece i, I don't know how it's going to be if i'm going to overheat in this it is 100 percent acrylic and then this is how the sleeve is looking you can see that it has a gradual decrease and then if i cinch the needles right now it is kind of hitting right above my wrist but i'm thinking i might need another inch or two but i want to finish this sleeve to see if it's <laughs> aligned I don't want one side to be lopsided and then just block it I don't think it's going to block very much because it is acrylic but at least it can kind of loosen it up soften it up and I do worry about pilling but I have to wear it a couple times to see if I can recommend this yarn because I really hate pilling yarn and it irks me and aggravates me and I don't want to tell you to make something if it's going to pill on you too. So I'm hoping by the next episode I can show you this finished, wear this bad boy, be ready for the fall. 
but that's all that I have for this week. Let me know your thoughts on the Lambtown Festival. Will you be going to any festivals near you? I know Rhinebeck is coming from my East Coasters and a lot of people from the West Coast are traveling out for it too. So comment down below what festivals you'll be going to if you're going to any, what you thought about Lambtown, and I hope to see you next week. Before we end today's video, I want to say we're almost to 700 subscribers and I do have a fun video planned for next week and a giveaway so don't forget to subscribe like comment do all the youtube -y things because next week i'm throwing a crazy giveaway your way but thank you so much for stopping by i hope that you and your family are happy healthy and safe and i'll talk to you soon take care bye